to Marshall knows stuff. I'm Marshall, and I know stuff. Stick around, and I'll show you how to know some of the stuff that I know. So, if you haven't noticed by now, I like making knives, and I like smoking my pipe, and I like drinking beer. With all this information at hand, my father-in-law got together a box of stuff that he pulled out of his garage, including pipe and tobacco, some old steel, looks like somebody already tried to make a blade out of, and some bones and such. So, in appreciation, I decided to make him a knife using some of the stuff that he gave me. And uh, I've already started drawing out the shape that I want to make this knife out of. It's going to be a modern combat style blade. And I'm going to give it a bone handle. So today, we're going to be making a knife out of a file with a bone handle. Since this uh, file is already pretty flat, and the grooves in it are pretty flattened out also, I'm not going to really need to forge this down too much. Pretty much what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting all this out with the angle grinder, uh, shape the bone, and then put the bone onto the handle. I think it will be a real rewarding project. So let's get to cutting this thing out. I'm excited to start on this one. So I know I've brought this up before, when you want to make a straight line with an angle grinder, you just make a shallow groove along your mark, and then you just keep going back and forth over that groove. It makes it a little rut for the angle grinder to sit in. If you uh, try to just go straight down through it and try to carve it on your own, you could go off at an angle, and it's not a good way to get a straight line. If you want a straight line with an angle grinder, just keep moving it back and forth over the same rut that you create, the same channel, and you'll always keep your straight line that way. Still be able to make something out of that for sure. Into the scrap box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up some of my uh, tool marks there with the velt sander, just kind of smoothing some of that stuff out, uh, give it a little bit uh, cleaner look. It'll be pretty cool. I've only spent about 20 minutes on this so far, and it's already looking like a pretty cool little knife. Like I said, my next step is just going to be cleaning up some of those edges that I left real quick here. And... Uh, then I'll uh, move on, start making it uh, look even more like a knife. If you see what I'm doing is I'm using the flat side of the belt, belt sander to give myself a flat edge right here. And if it's not exactly flat, if I have some of these low spots in it, you're going to be able to tell that it was done kind of chintzy, so I'm giving it all a uniform grind the whole way down. That looks pretty square to me, and I know that it is on the back side of it because that's the way the file was made to begin with. I've got a nice flat surface on that side now, so now we can get to making this blade and uh, polishing it up a little bit. All right, see I got it on the jig now. 
and uh, <clears throat> I was looking at it, and I think I might be able to get the same angle all the way from the base to the tip uh, using the top of the handle as the guide to just level that, keep it, uh, keep it level with the top of the jig, and I can flip it over and do it on the other side, and then that way I know that it's consistent for this side and for this side whenever I run it across the belt sander. And uh, like I always say, the key to a razor sharp blade is keeping a consistent edge. So I'm gonna give it a shot real quick this way. I'm gonna see if uh, just using that top level will suffice for jigging the uh, edge of this side of the blade. If it doesn't look like I can get enough uh, grind at the tip, then I'm gonna leave myself enough, my enough steel to where I can um, adjust it uh, get a protractor and measure the angle from the bottom of the jig and then I'll uh, start over and do it that way. Okay, it looks pretty consistent, but uh, what I'm finding is I'm gonna have to move this to the end of the jig. I made myself a long jig on purpose uh, just so that I could do longer blades if I needed to, <clears throat> but I'm gonna have to choke this one up all the way to the end because uh, it angles down enough to where I'm hitting the end of that, and if I wanna hit that tip, I'm gonna have to choke it up a little bit. Boom, shaping up already, right? Looks like a knife, doesn't it? They still need to harden it, but what I was noticing, looking down the middle and just eyeballing it, I got it pretty close, but it looks like this side needs a tad bit more. I'm gonna hit that side with the uh, belt sander again real quick of just working that down a little bit further. And then I'm gonna harden it once it's hardened then um, I can actually start working towards uh, shaping it without messing the tip up. Now, yeah, that's another thing I need to do. I was going to take it in on this side a little bit too, so I'm just going to hit both of those sides real quick just to give it a little bit more accent uh, like a Bowie knife should have. And uh, it's got that cool little curve there too. Then we'll start getting on to uh, really making this thing look trick. Okay, and doing that ridge on the back was actually pretty easy too. Uh, you can see it's shaped exactly like I wanted it right there on the front. This uh, top already has a taper, so it's not coming all the way to the top like I wanted it to, but uh, it's definitely something that I can deal with. You can see that it kind of uh, it tapers at either side from the top, but I think that still uh, gives it plenty of accent like I need. And uh, I also brought up how you need to make sure that the angle is the same but opposite on the other side when you're doing that. The way that I uh, cheated that is I just let the bottom of the pummel rest at the uh, on the workbench whenever I was clamping it down and then the bottom of the blade also rests on the workbench whenever I was clamping it down so then that way whenever I turn it around it'll be the same angle it's gonna hit that same angle I don't have to even measure it with a protractor because I just let both sides bottom out and it'll be the exact same angle on both sides and there that is. That took just a tiny bit of work on the belt sander for that little bit of accent. And it really sets it off. It really makes the blade look a lot better. <clears throat> now, um, you're probably asking why I'm going to harden it if it's a file. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about files, but they are just uh, inherently hard. They're, they're hardened for the sake of being hard. Uh, files are the hardest steel that you can come by for the sake of filing other steel. But this particular knife, I know that it's already been worked because I saw that somebody tried to shape it into a blade. That being so, I don't know what's been done to it. I can tell already that it's pretty hard, but I don't know if uh, the right quenching methods, methods have been used or um, if it got up to critical temperature or if it was left alone altogether. For the sake of consistency, I'm just going to do it again on my own. It's not going to hurt the steel to get rehardened. Um, but I would prefer it be done and go out the door the right way so I know that it was hardened the right way. While I'm waiting for the forge to warm up, I'm just going to hit the uh, 
knife real quick with a wire brush to get some of the rust off. Be sure that you glove up on stuff like this. I was doing this on uh, one of my knives uh, just a couple days ago, and it slipped and ran over my whole finger. It kind of messed it up. Gloves are a good idea when using uh, any power tools to begin with. Oh, and especially safety glasses. You never know when a piece of wire is going to just shoot out of there and hit you in the face. If it's going to hit me in the face and it's aimed at my eye, you better hope that you have uh, some safety glasses on. That's already looking cool. It's a cool little knife. Remember how rusty it was just a minute ago? Like that. That's a cool looking knife already, but it's gonna be even cooler whenever I've got the silver on top and the black down in the ridges in the bottom. It's gonna really set off that uh, bright, shiny silver on it. It's gonna be cool. Let's uh, get it in the forge and get to hardening. As I'm doing this, I want you to take note that uh, getting good heat out of this, it takes putting something on top of it. I always put more charcoal over the top to get good heat. And you can see right here, the blade is actually sticking out. I'm keeping that tip out from the center of it because it's gonna heat up on its own. I need that center to heat up before the tip because the tip's gonna heat a lot faster if I don't, and I don't wanna melt that tip off. All right, we're at critical temp. Gonna go ahead and get this thing a Real quick oil bath here. Swish it around a little bit too to make sure that it's getting uh, not just the hot parts of the oil against it. You'll notice whenever you are uh, quenching an oil, you swish it around like this and the fire will go out because uh, you're hitting cool parts with the hot metal. There it goes. This is going to be a cool knife. Nice and quenched now. There it is. Now we can get to uh, cleaning it up and making this thing look slick. I know I said that before. We're going to make it look slicker. Now we're going to make it look slicker. How about that? Be careful when you're quenching, it gets oil all over everything. My trusty, trusty angle grinder was right next to it and it started to spew oil all over it because I uh, didn't pay attention beforehand like an idiot. <clears throat> like I said, I didn't have the brass rivets to affix the handle to the, uh, or the bone to the handle of the knife. So <clears throat> um, I've either got to wait and I was, in the meantime, I was going to actually grind down the handle to give it a flat surface on either side. And it would make it a, a little bit easier for the handle to attach that way. There wouldn't be all these air pockets in between. But uh, in lieu of waiting, I think what I'm going to end up doing is epoxying the handle on, the bone onto the handle, so that uh, I can just get it done right away. And in that case, these... Uh, these little file marks are going to give it something to hold on to, the epoxy to fill in and hold on to, so those actually might be beneficial. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to affix it with epoxy, but in the meantime, if you'll notice, there's all these ridges along the back from where it was a file. It's not actually that big of a deal because on the back of a lot of Bowie knives there are these ridges. However, these are pointing the wrong way. These are pointing out this way, and uh, you want them to point back that way. Because the idea is if you're uh, sticking your knife into an Indian or a German or a Russian or whoever the bad guy happens to be at that point, it, you can get the knife in, but it's hard to pull it out. You have to tear flesh to pull it out. So the ridges going the other way on this one is actually not really conducive to uh, the reason for their design. So I'm going to flatten those out and I'm going to epoxy the handle on. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this to the belt sander and give it a nice flat edge on the bottom. I like to use the flat side of the belt sander to give myself a nice straight edge. Even in doing this, I'm noticing that there's some low spots on the spine of the knife, and it's going to get it all one exact line, one very straight line. 
can see where there's low spots and high spots, and it's going to get all of that level as I'm uh, sanding it down. Those ridges are almost gone on the blade. Like I told you before, when you're going through and grinding something or sanding something, keep some water near so you can keep it cool. Keep digging in water because you don't want it to heat up too much. Uh, you don't want to change the physical properties, namely getting it too hot to where all the molecules start expanding again and weakening it. I've already hardened that blade, so I don't want to weaken it by uh, heating it up too much and undoing the hardening. And there we go. <clears throat> nice, clean, flat spine the whole length of the knife. It's uh, good to go now. Blade. But uh, it is. It's perfectly, uh, perfectly straight on the back now. This thing's just about ready to go. I think uh, I'll start uh, cutting some of the bone. And uh, another thing that I want to bring up is uh, I haven't had any time to stabilize the bone, uh, nor do I have the equipment to stabilize the bone. Uh, it takes uh, letting it sit in resin and then vacuuming out all the air over the period of a week or two uh, to stabilize it, and that just allows the resin to soak into the bone. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to epoxy the bone onto here, and then I'm going to start uh, putting epoxy over the surface of it and letting it soak in a little bit. It's not as effective as stabilizing. Uh, stabilizing is a long process that's uh, very thorough, but uh, this, I, I honestly doubt this knife will be used um, real heavily or at all. It'll probably be more of a decorative knife, but uh, if it was going to be used real heavily, then stabilizing is uh, definitely the method you want to go. Okay, so now what I'm doing is actually selecting the bone that I want for the handle. <clears throat> this, uh, this piece right here is actually going to be more than enough. If you see how much I ac you actually need on the knife, I only need to go up to that first finger notch, and there's enough on that side, and on that side, if I were to use just that top part of the bone. But what I need to do is I need this side flat, I need this side flat, and I also need this back side flat so that it sits flush against all of the flush sides and then the hand side it's going to have a little bit of texture to it i'm going to leave it that way because it's going to be awesome i know that i always tell you about safety if, if there's ever been anything that you've uh heated in any of my safety advice let it be this if you're ever sanding bone wear a respirator this stuff gets uh ground down to these small small particles and if you breathe it in it's just going to sit at the bottom of your lungs and your body can't break it down so it'll just sit there and add up. So you're effectively reducing your lung capacity every time you breathe in some bone. Wear a respirator every time you're working with bone. Always. Don't, uh, don't skimp on that one because you don't want to be breathing this stuff in. Your body can't do anything with it and uh, you're going to be giving yourself some mesothelioma or something like that. Everything that you grind has got its own distinct smell. If you didn't want to wear a respirator before you started grinding on a bone, you will afterwards because it smells like burning flesh whenever you do this. Same thing if you uh, rest a hot poker on your arm or if you uh, light your hair on fire. It's not a, it's not a good smell. All right, that piece that came off is going to be reattached real quick here, and I'm just going to use some of this GO2 glue. It uh, dries clear, and uh, <clears throat> it's absorbent and water resistant, so I'm going to let it just soak into both sides, and I think that'll actually uh, do pretty good for bonding. All right, I'm back at the file knife, and uh, my bone is almost ready to go. I need to work on it a little bit more, but I want to carve some patterns in the spine of the handle and it goes up into the blade and I hardened the whole blade up to about here so even with my file I'm not gonna have an easy time carving out the patterns on the spine 
Uh, and also, I want to make sure that this is a durable knife. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to temper it. I'm going to go and throw it in the oven uh, about 450 degrees and usually about an hour or two to uh, get a good consistent heat on it. Uh, it's another hot day in the 505, so I'm going to bandana up and then I'm going to uh, try to stay away from inside where the oven is because it doesn't need to be any hotter in there. It's going to really make the uh, people that are inside mad. I'm going to be working on these bones a little bit while I'm waiting for the uh, oven to temper the, the blade. That'll give me plenty of time to work on this. I'll be done with these scales, these bone scales by then, undoubtedly. And gluing this one together, I got a little bit of a uh, paper towel on that, but I fully anticipated that. Uh, I'm going to end up sanding all this down anyway, so all that's going to go away. I'll get rid of some of the flash for, left over from the glue also. We'll be, we'll be sanding it, and it's still going to have a pretty cool effect, the uh, bone on that, on that dark steel. So uh, get the respirator on and start going uh, after some of the meat because there's just too much meat. I'm going to get it uh, as flat as I can with the Dremel because it'll make quick work of it, and then I'll get it on the belt sander to make sure that it's a nice, uh, a nice square plane. I'm going to leave those scales like that. I'm pretty happy with them there. Like I said, I'm going to flatten them out a little bit more. And uh, you want to leave yourself enough room to be able to work with it on the blade too, so I'm not going to take off, off much more than that. Just really squaring up the sides and the back. My scales are all done. I've got them all planed out and uh, tapered down there at the end. Uh, they're almost square, square enough uh, squares I need for them to be uh, epoxied onto here. If I was going to rivet, I'd get them a lot more square, but it's not going to do me any good to waste that time on it. And I tempered the blade. I kept it uh, in there for about an hour and a half at 450, and it gave it that nice, cool hue all along the spine. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to measure, it looks like I've got about five and a half inches, so I'll just go every half inch, and I'm going to make a mark every half inch where I'm going to make an accent, and it'll be easy to see, it's going to show up real easy because the uh, heat treating it turns it blue. last mark. Now that I have a mark every half inch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate back and forth taking notches out of the side. And I sure do appreciate how easy this file is going through here now that it's tempered. If it were not tempered, this would be a big pain in the butt to do. It would be very difficult. Now what I'm doing real quick here is I'm just clamping the scales down onto the knife <clears throat> to see where they're going to sit comfortably with the, the pointer hole where it is or the pointer groove. And because uh, I decided I wanted to put a little lanyard ring in the bottom of this. So I want to cut off a small amount of the bottom of the scales, but I need to see where they sit in order to do that. Now that I have those there, I'm going to mark each one so I know how much to take off. All right, I'm all flattened out on the bottom for the lanyard hole now, but uh, I've got to figure out how I'm going to go about putting that lanyard hole in there. I'm thinking about just uh, drilling an initial hole with a regular drill bit and then using a like a diamond tip on the Dremel to try to get it all the way, punch the rest of the way out. I think I'm going to start out that way and see how it goes. If it uh, 
doesn't end up going very well, then I'll just uh, rethink it. So if you're curious about what this is looking like, I cut it out like that and uh, to hide some of the tool marks that I had on either edge from making that flat line, I'm going to have to add a little bit of a bevel around the outside of it. If you're curious about what I'm using, those little uh, diamond tips I get from Harbor Freight. I get this whole package for like 20 bucks and uh, those diamond ones are especially helpful for like stone and stuff like that. I'll probably do a stone video at some point and you'll see me use these diamond tips for stone. Okay, that's as far as I want to take the lanyard. It's uh, hollowed out just like I want it to be and uh, I've got a nice bevel going all the way around it. So I'm going to leave that alone. The, uh, the scales meet up exactly with it and then they taper down right at the finger hole like I wanted it to. This thing's shaping up. I'm just about ready to call it good on the 3000 grit. <clears throat> this is the first uh, step of sharpening and polishing. You'll see that there's like a consistent gray along the whole edge whenever you're done with the uh, 3000 grit. That lets you know that it's hitting all of the surface of the edge evenly. If you have any low spots, it's going to look something like that. You'll see the low spot coming out uh, until you get that consistent gray along the whole edge, you know that you have more work to do like on that little low spot it I might give it a little bit more uh, just to see if I can flatten it down a little bit but I'm right down the middle on this edge it's all looking really good really technically accurate so I'm not gonna work too much harder on that before I just take it over to the 10,000 grit and give that whole edge a nice polish all right that's it after the polish and you can see the difference it's uh, bright and shiny, and I think that's really important whenever you're doing these Trollski knives because uh, the whole rest of the body of the knife could look like a piece of crap, but so long as you've got that nice clean edge, people are going to know that uh, you are very purposeful and uh, deliberate about what you're doing with the knife. So even though the rest of this is a file, there's a nice clean edge on there, and uh, people are going to know that you were doing what you meant to do with the knife. I still have that low spot on there. But uh, I actually don't want to mess with this anymore because this is a nice polished edge in it. And without even stropping it yet, I'm already shaving sharp again. This is why I never have hair on the back of my hands because I'm always shaving it off with all my knives, showing people how sharp my knives are. But uh, yep, this, is, this one's shaving sharp. It's, it's good to go. Uh, and that's another thing that I feel is important to do with knives because a lot of times I'll show people my knives and I'll show them like this Trollski knife and they really don't care and then as soon as they see it shaving they, they see how sharp it is and how deliberate the knife build was then that at that point they're impressed that's really where the uh, the value in the knife comes in people realize how much uh, care you put into the knife once they see what it's capable of I thought it was a clear epoxy and uh, as I'm doing this I found out that it was a uh, light gray I'm going to get it all the way mixed and compare it to the handle itself. And I wanted to use a metal one because uh, I'm more worried about it hanging on to the metal than I am the bone. The bone is pretty porous and I, I feel like it'll soak in and it'll hold on to that just fine. All right, dudes, we're almost there. I let this set up for 30 minutes, and uh, it's already pretty well fixed. I mean, this stuff started to set up right away. It was uh, turning pretty, uh, pretty solid right away. The bone handle is on, but I need to shape all of that still. Um, 
I did notice that some of the epoxy got into some of those ornamental grooves that I put in the back of it. The, the pointer finger hole sticks out just a little bit above the bevel that I put on the bone. So I'm going to flatten that down a little bit and then also just sand over all of the handle, give it a nice smooth finish, and then uh, also get rid of the epoxy on either side. That's it after preliminary shaping. You can see I got it nice and even on both sides. The uh, ornamentation on that side didn't go away too much, but um, I am going to hit this with a Dremel to get some more of that epoxy out of those cracks. And I'm going to dig a little bit more out of there too because I don't like that there. Okay, I've got this uh, 220 wet sandpaper that I'm going to be doing some of the uh, lighter work on this with. Get it wet first and uh, just real quick polish over some of the stuff. Give it a nice consistent uh, finish over all of it. Still have to stay away from that edge. It's a sharp, sharp knife, so I've got to stay away from that edge. Okay, that was only a, about five minutes of polishing it actually, and it came together right away. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And uh, I'm going to start taking off a little of these, uh, there's little bits of epoxy that I don't really like sticking out. So I'm going to dremel those off real quick. It'll be a real quick process. Getting all that epoxy out of there with a the dremel was kind of a pain, but I don't regret it. I would, it would have bugged me forever if I hadn't. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill in some of these cracks with that uh, clear glue now. Uh, and it uh, will soak into there. It'll make it so there's no uh, rough edges. And that's it. I gave it a real quick coat of clear super glue to fill in those cracks. And uh, now all I need to do is wait for it to dry. And uh, we'll see how it looks like that. I don't think that I'm going to need to do anything else on it because it already has a pretty good sheen on it just from that glue being over the top of it. And that just might seal it in as well as I need. Uh, I'm just going to let it cure overnight and uh, probably tomorrow morning I'll take a picture of it to uh, show you guys exactly how it turned out but uh, that was a fun project I was glad that I did it I'm glad that uh, glad that I had the idea to do this and the materials to do it it was uh, one that I might uh, duplicate in the future because it was so much fun to me remember like subscribe tell your friends and let's keep knowing some stuff